All right, everyone, so we were looking at the Bing toolbox, the Bing links, the Bing Webmaster tools, and all of that. We will do now the same thing over for Google now. So we want to first check out google.com slash webmasters. Let's go to google.com slash webmasters. This will ask you also to, to sign in. So if you were able to set this up previously, last week, you should be able to sign in. We'll start off with um, google.com slash webmasters. So take a moment to sign in. And we will see that we can get similar information, but probably more of it on Google because it's the larger search engine. It's got more traffic. Alright, so if you did manage to set up your site last time, uh, it might be collecting data now. It's been a week. And uh, your site should be listed. If you click on the site itself, it should then take you to a screen where it'll give you more detail. At a glance, you might see this column, crawl errors, search analytics, sitemaps. And so here I'm getting an overview within the last month that this particular client on a month-long basis, the traffic has been trending downward. And I can click to view the actual keywords and traffic and all of that. If you click on <clears throat> Search Analytics, that's where it'll, it'll give you more detail. These are the particular keywords people have searched for. So it shows here that La Coche is the second most searched term. Puig is right there, etc. So this screen here can show me the queries. These are the, uh, the keywords that people are searching for. And I can see it in terms of clicks, impressions, CTR, and position. So again, impressions have a value. Uh, so 114,000 impressions resulted in about 3,700 clicks. And I'm seeing both of them are trending downward, but it looks like technically at about the same starting and ending point in a month. I can also then compare the CTR, which is a click-through rate. That's just a percentage. So if I just show CTR, 3.28%. There are a number of impressions as opposed to a number of clicks, which is 3.28. And I would love to have, you know, 80% CTR rate, 50%, and so forth, but you're going to see that that's very, very difficult still. Double digits is very good, you know, 10%, 15%, and that sort of thing. Teens, uh, but even down on 5%, 3%, and such, it's telling you within this time period. People see your site, but how many actually click? That's the CTR. And then average position. Well, when these keywords are used, on average, this client is found on that position. 
And if these particular keywords are looked at individually, that's where they're found. That can help you to figure out, these are the real keywords that I need to invest my time and effort into. Um, how many sets of um, keywords would you recommend? Because, I mean, I can have a hundred different ones, but is it in my best interest to? Um, I, would, I would say that many is a bit, but I wouldn't be afraid to have a dozen or two dozen, because you do want to create a breadth of content uh, you don't always want to be hammering the same thing over and over, the same keywords and such. That's what spammers do. You want to have a wide breadth of keywords uh, for the search engines to find. So let's see. Queries, pages. So here I can see what are the most popular pages. The about page in Spanish is the one that's a little more popular than the English one. So um, that's telling me that's getting a good amount of traffic. I could go into that page and make sure that that page has CTAs, call to actions. I can make sure that that page is the most optimized. If I'm seeing a lot of people come here second most, I want to make sure that I've got some button about buy now, register now, I want to really take advantage of the traffic that I know going to that page. Yes? I've always noticed that um, on my top of my analytics, the, that one that you have right there that shows up first always comes up, and or also a backslash CA. What does that mean? This slash here? Yeah. Well, these are all slashes. They shouldn't be backslashes. Right. They should be slashes. But if you do see that one, that simply means the root, the basic index page of your site, your home page, basically. What's the other one that you said that you also see? I think you'll see slash CA. Hmm. Which I can't it out. just might be the way your particular site is set up that the root of your site maybe is on is on that particular directory, something like that. Okay. But not the, I should just ignore that. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem, and you should be able to click to take you to it. That way you can see exactly what it is. Okay. Countries, this might have some value if I select that. Well, the most traffic is coming from the U.S., then Mexico, etc. If, if you've got a lot of traffic from a country that you're not expecting, that's an indicator that probably you have a lot of spam links, that you have a lot of traffic from you know, weird websites about spam and, and, and all that bad stuff. So you can actually further refine the data on another screen that we'll see. Devices. In this particular client, mobile is the number one source of traffic, then desktop and then distant, distant third tablets. The point of that is to then um, people sometimes ask me what size should I design my website as or what should I do this or do that about my website and I often have to say I don't know I can't give you an answer you're gonna see plenty of tutorials and articles that say make sure your website is this size and has these settings but that's such a one-size-fits-all answer that it won't work once you set this up and you let traffic come to you, or bring traffic, then you will start to create data that is relevant to you. I might not have known that more people are visiting my site on mobile. But here I do know that, so I better make sure that my mobile experience is on point. I better make sure that when people visit my site on their mobile device that they can buy the product, that the graphics aren't so small and the text is so unreadable to lose my traffic. So then we've got search type, which really doesn't go into much detail. Um, no additional info. So That one might be different than if you're doing, uh, for example, paid search. If you're also doing Google uh, AdWords to get you traffic from pay-per-click, 
that might show you your organic versus your paid search. And if I want to look at this in different time periods, the current and the previous time periods, So this is your search analytics. There's a lot of good data to look here, but to look at here. But the um, the place where you're going to get the most data is over from uh, Google Analytics. We'll get to that in one moment. But here's the last thing we'll do here under under this. We're going to look at um, back on the handout uh, here. Google Webmaster. You go to your dashboard, you go to search traffic, and they call it links to your site. So, search traffic, links to your site. This is the report from Google Analytics um, about your, your backlinks. Who links to you most? Number one, yellow pages, trade LA Weekly, etc. Which pages get the most links? The home page the catering page, then the about videos. So I have a question about um, this data. So some websites have a domain name set up that is Google, like DNS reports. Mm -hmm. So the actual name of the page is different. So they might own the domain name, but when you type in your search and find that domain name, it's going to come to like a blog. Website, like a blogger or a, sure. you, you know, a dot, um, WordPress mm -hmm. dot com website or something like that. What does that do to your um, uh, page ranking in these different search engines if your actual page name is xxx.blogger.whatever mm -hmm. whatever your domain name is, or xxx.wordpress.com, but your domain name is, you know, some other dot com? It should not hurt you if you've got 301 redirects set up. Um, this is that that name from that other that other name is Wait, taking the you to. The domain name you own is a 301 redirect to the to the exactly. WordPress or the Blogger blog. Yeah, that on the technical level you set it up in the proper way to redirect it. If you didn't, that could hurt your your rankings. But then even if your page name at the top is. Because I'm thinking like the related links are all to their you know, privately owned the mm -hmm. domain name. And for example, the links in uh, social media accounts like mm -hmm. Facebook and Twitter and all your social media profiles are the privately owned domain names. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be the problem as long as you're telling Google and Bing that those are permanently moved domains over there. That's what the 301 is. That it goes to the correct place no matter what. You would still get benefit of those links. Mm -hmm. those yep, you should as long as you make sure you set this up in, properly in the back end. Okay. This, uh, these links here, if you click on more, they might give you more data, and then you will see these websites. And I'm seeing a few that perhaps for this client, I don't know what this is about. I don't really want to click on them in class, just in case. So, um, you know, like that would refuse watches.com. I don't know. That's already very weird there. So I would go in and find out neolaki.net, I would go in and find out what are these sites about. If they are bad sites, then I would go through the process of disavow. If they are good sites, then I would do what I said previously. I would hype the links. I would um, tweet about something, post on Instagram. I would just try to get more traffic to them because that will get more traffic to me. Yes? Um, you know how I'm thinking set up a spreadsheet um, so you can keep track of the um, sites to disavow? And I'm suspecting that you're suggesting you do the same thing with Google. Do you mm -hmm. use the same spreadsheet or do you use just a spreadsheet separate? It's totally up to you because in the spreadsheet you can create multiple sheets. Well, so one right. sheet over here for Bing and one for Google. Or keep them separate files. Sure. You might have some crossover because they're both browsing the same internet. But... But you have to disavow one for Bing and one yeah. for... Yeah. Yes. Okay. Would you go through the effort of disavowing 
think like and the you know coming to the table I would I would you know I mean like we have five hundred and we've got ten that are have that is a good point. At a certain point, it might be diminishing returns. I would definitely try to do the ones that are much more. The ones that are one and two and five, maybe not as relevant to do, maybe. But it really depends on what about if you do a little bit at a time and then eventually get through your list of all of these. Once you disavow them, you know, they're going to be taken care of and they're done. So then you have more to focus on the good links. Not quite, because it really depends on your site. How many pages do you have? You know, uh, blog articles and all of that. And if this one is just one right here, let's say Discover Los Angeles was bad, and it was just one link to my page, I might not worry about it. But if I don't have a lot of traffic, I think the best way to say it is if I don't have a lot of traffic, I would deal with them all. If I've got a lot of traffic, then it might be OK. Um, so. Let's look at how to disavow because there's no... I haven't found it. They might not make it obvious because it could be so powerful. There's no direct link. I've got it here in my handout, but there's no direct link inside of the console here for disavow. It might be there. I might not have found it, but I think I've searched pretty well. And what I've got here is that okay, if you go on Google and you search Google Disavow Tool, it should take you to that link, which that link is right there in the PDF. You can click on that and it'll open it. So I'm going to click my link in my document and that should open the web browser hopefully. If it doesn't, you can also, like, let's say you don't have my handout. Here's how I would also do it. I would go over to Google and search for Google Disavow Tool. The top result, the top result of that search should be my handout. This is our backlink search console, etc. We'll take a look what that one is like because it is very different from, from Bing. It goes on to give you a big old spiel about it and a big old warning, and you'll see several warnings as we go through this because it's going to possibly be very detrimental if you do it wrong. It's going on to say there's a two-step process. First, you'll need to download a list of links to your site. Next, you'll create a file containing only the links that you want to disavow and upload this to Google. So it's saying you go to your webmaster tools and such, you download the documents, you look at it, and then you compile a, a list of, of links in a very basic text document. Not in Word and such, not in that kind of word processor, just a very basic text document. If you've got Windows, you want to use the, the app called Notepad. Plain old Notepad makes very basic text files. That's all we need. If you're on the Mac, you want to use Text Edit. That's also a very basic text editing software that comes with the Mac. So Notepad on Windows, Text Edit on the Mac. You don't want to use Word or pages, or any of that complexity. Like that for Windows, text edit, Mac. And as these instructions tell you, you're going to make a list of these bad websites. And as it recommends to you, what you're going to do is also make comments here. Comments are preceded by a pound sign. Comment. Example.com removed most links but missed these. So basically, Google wants you to do the hard work. Google wants you to go to the spam websites and ask for them to stop linking to you. Good luck. So here, they claim, OK, I went and I tried to remove this, and they removed those links, except for this one. So I put, a, I put simply the name of the link right there, spam.example.com slash stuff slash comments .html, and this one. So I'm telling them, disavow those pages. Contacted owner of shadyseo.com on this date to ask for link removal but got no response. How long did they wait? It doesn't say. But let's, it assumes you tried. And then you say domain colon the name of the website, and that's disavowing the domain. 
So I would go into Notepad, I would create my file line by line, and you know, I'd say domain badguys.ru, and then put a big list of them, and then, then I can click through this window here, disavow links to a page, click there. If I'm logged in, it'll recognize I'm logged in, and it'll say, which of these sites do you want to disavow on? So we manage a bunch of sites, a bunch of sites, and then I would go in and say disavow links, and I would go through the process, and I keep seeing the warning over and over, this is advanced, be careful, you could cause, you could shoot yourself in the foot, and you could. You could disavow accidentally, you might have misspelled the domain name, and you've disavowed a legitimate site. That's why they make it hard for you to get to this. They don't put the front door on the front of the house, they put it on the roof. But once you're up there, then you can get in, upload this file, notice it's looking for a txt file, not a word doc, not, a, not an advanced you know, word processor file, a basic file. And it says again, we recommend that you only disavow backlinks if you believe that there are, is a considerable number of spammy, artificial, or low-quality links pointing to your site, and if you are confident that the links are causing issues for you. So I choose the file, I submit it, and they look at it, they'll process it, it'll take a little time, I don't know how much, but this is better than for it to happen automatically someday. You're telling, you're waking up Google, you're telling Google, here's the bad site, it's linking to my site, please do something about it. It may happen quickly, it may not, but at least you're showing you are a good webmaster, a legitimate business online, and that will help your SEO chances, your rankings. This disavow links is more of a bit of a process as you're seeing than Bing, but at least you can use the same tool for the backlinks that we get, the backlinks report that we get out of Search Console, and the one that we will see right now under Analytics. Before we go, that any any questions so far? Yes. Um, if you go ahead and report or disavow these links, um, you know how you were saying that you recommend doing this on a monthly basis? Yes. And say in a month you see that the backing is still there, do you go ahead and resubmit the disavow links? No, I wouldn't, uh, dis I wouldn't resubmit the same ones. I might see new ones. The thing is that this file is going to get constantly recycled. This file, you're going to keep adding to it. It's still going to be the ones you added last month plus any new ones. Oh, so in the file, it'll still list all the bad ones that you've done before that they might not have gotten to. Yeah, you would clean them out once they are no longer listed on the report there, and then leave them there as long as they are still listed. All right, so let's look at, then, Google Analytics. This is the one where you're going to spend the most time on, and it's got the most data, and it's the most confusing. Let's go to google.com slash analytics. In the top right corner, you can click Sign In and select Google Analytics. Click on Google Analytics. It should let you sign in pretty easily if you've already signed in. So as I've said previously, I do this for various clients, so my screen is different here and that it's got a bunch of clients' data. For yourself, you probably only have one folder, and inside of the folder you probably just have one website. You want to click on that, probably called All Website Data. And so what this shows you at a glance um, is a lot of data where 
within this time period of one month, here's what happened. The longer you have this set up, the more data it'll give you. And you can even compare it this month with last month, this month with last year, whatever. But this particular client, once I clicked on it, it took me to the screen on top, reporting. Here's where all my data is at. And on the left, I have a variety of screens. I mean, dashboard, where I can get things consolidated, shortcuts, because I've got so much to look at, I could go into shortcuts, intelligence events. This is one of the things that I have to educate myself a little bit more on, because there's just so much to, to learn about this that I feel I need to get a refresher on intelligence events myself. Real time, real time overview can tell you the traffic that's happening right now on your site. So I'm seeing here there's one person visiting the website. Here's how it was in the last few minutes and such, and where they came from. A section on audience and so forth. So it dropped me into audience overview. Each one of these has an overview. Audience is who visits your site. Acquisition is how did they get to your site. How did you acquire them? You know, where did they come from? And behavior is what did they do on your website? The path that they that they went on your website, what they did on your website. You may or may not have conversions, and this is if they completed conversion goals. You won't have that perhaps if you haven't set up conversion goals. But under the overview, then I get some good information about the audience. Uh, you can hover over these various little things and it'll pop up to tell you, well, what's a session? A session is the period of time a user is actively engaged with your website. So they visited your website, they clicked on stuff, they don't just have it laying there fallow, they're actually active on your site. And so all of these are explained, but basically those are hits, basically. Users, page views, so there were nearly 17,000 page views. When people visit the site on average, they, they look at about two different pages, and they're on the site about a minute and a half. Bounce rate 63. Are these numbers good and bad? I can't exactly tell you, because that's going to depend on the purpose of your website. Let me give you a couple of scenarios. This particular client is a restaurant. It shows here that people are visiting about two pages when they visit the site, and they're spending about a minute and a half. Let me ask you, if you visit a restaurant's website, what are you looking for, in your opinion? The menu, the menu sure. Maybe order, maybe phone number, you know, something directly. So let's say they're looking for the menu. They go to the home page, they click on the menu. That's two pages, that's two screens. That's why it's like that. Let's say they want to order something. So maybe they visited the site several times before, and they bookmarked the Order Now link. They follow their bookmark, go directly to the page, order their stuff, and they're gone in a short amount of time. So for this client, these numbers might be fine. Let's say another kind of client. They're, a, they're an author. They blog a lot. They have lots of articles. 1.79 sessions, two, two pages, might be terrible. It means they come to the home page, they read one thing, and, they, and then that's it. They leave. They haven't looked at my other 17 articles. So for an author, that might be terrible. Furthermore, for the author, they're barely spending any time reading anything. They read something, they leave. That could be terrible, too. Bounce rate, again, depends on what you're trying to accomplish online. If this is a restaurant, high bounce rate might not be so bad. Or for an author, it might be terrible. Bounce rate is basically someone visits a page on your site and they leave without going elsewhere. That might be fine for the restaurant. They go directly to the Buy Now page, they buy it, they leave. What else are they going to do on the site? For the author, that bounce rate might be terrible. It means they read one thing and then they left, didn't read anything more. So I, I can't say that these numbers are good and bad. It really depends on you on your client, on, on your company, what you're trying to accomplish online. You get a lot of detail here, the language of the user visiting, the country, city, and so forth, browser. So I'm seeing here Chrome is the number one browser people visit with, then Safari. It's up to you to do something with all of this data. Let me give you an example, a negative example of what someone did. You think about how you can make it positive. There was some sort of a 
you know, um, hotel booking site, something like that. And it was discovered that if that if you had visited their site in Safari web browser, the prices were a little higher. Now, who usually uses Safari browser? Mac people, Mac users, those on a Mac. So apparently the company decided if they're rich enough to have a Mac, they can afford this slightly more expensive room. So that was discovered, and it was discovered that if you visited on the wrong browser, it was more expensive. It was discovered, and they said, oh, that was an error in our programming. We'll fix it. Well, obviously, that's, a, that's the most extreme negative example of what you do with this data. But what you could do in a positive way is this particular client now is starting to see more views from Edge, Microsoft Edge, which is the successor of Internet Explorer. So if I know any programming or I, or I install a plugin or a widget to my website or whatever that can detect this, whenever an Edge user visits the site, I can make a pop-up happen that says, Welcome Edge user, use 10% off your next purchase. So getting all this information to do something about it, somehow figuring that out via to do this via Facebook, because on another screen here I'll see which of the social networks is the most popular one for my site. Because people say, which network should I get on? Or what screen size should I set up my, my site? I don't know. You can tell yourself that once you set up these tools, let it run, and then let it monitor. So you can look at audience. There's a lot to look at here. The one I want to look at for the backlinks is under acquisition. Quick overview under acquisition tells me that with this particular client, most traffic comes from organic search. This is all traffic that it sees from Google. 53% of the traffic in the last time period came from someone doing a Google search. They don't know what they want, they search, find the client, they found the client. Second most is from direct. They type the address directly. So second most amount of traffic there. Third is social. Traffic from Twitter, from Facebook, etc. And is if I click to go deeper, it'll tell me exactly what social networks. I'll see that in a moment. And then referral. This is These basically are the backlinks. Another website referred this client. Another website wrote about that client, had a link, and that link took them back to this website. my handout here, I'm saying click on your website, go into acquisition, go into all referrals. So I've got to update that. They don't call it all referrals now, they call it all traffic. All traffic source channels. Yeah, sorry about that, I need to update that, but it's under all traffic right there. Channels. Just different words for the same thing. Source. So here we go. Acquisition, all traffic, source. Number one is from Google. Number two is directly typing it. Number three, Facebook. People on mobile on Facebook. Notice how the people on their desktop on Facebook is less than people on a mobile device on Facebook. Yahoo search, Bing search. Hmm, that's interesting. People on Yelp, people looking up Mexican food. On Yelp, they find it, follow the link, they go to the client's website. LA Weekly, so big old respected magazine, um, getting traffic there. RankCheckerOnline.com. Fake. Spam. You'll get a sense for what's a real site and what's a fake site the more you look at this, but these that are trying to use these keywords in their titles are often the spammers. I want to check my rank on Google. Well, someone got that name, rankchecker.com. Uh, I want to get more traffic to my website. So someone got more traffic, more, more Google traffic.com. And so that's a good candidate for disavow, most likely. I would still give them the benefit of the doubt and click on them and see what their site is about, but it probably won't do any good. It does seem like a spammer. 
And I would go through the same process of disavow for Google Analytics that I did for Google Webmaster. I can download all of this data as well up here somewhere. Uh, export. On the top of any screen, because there's all of these screens can be exported individually. Export and select what format I want it in. Download it, make my notes and all of that once a month. Go in there. Travel channel, so not a good traffic and such. I can go deeper. I can actually click what's the exact link from travel channel. And for all of these things, it'll give me the data about the bounce rate and pages per session and all of that. And I'm seeing here, for example, under bounce rate, here's this, here's the, the averages. But notice less people leave the site when they come from a referral. Someone comes from someone's blog and stays around, hangs around on the site more than from social media traffic. Showing here as well. 1 minute 45 as opposed to 1 minute 23. That's actually the lowest one there because some might say social media really you know, decreases the attention span. That might be significant. Some people reading a blog article spending more time. It looks like that more people, but it does look like more people actually book a table from social media. And so this book a table, this is a conversion goal. You don't see this automatically to create a goal. You have to go up to admin, goals. Up on the admin screen, you can add goals. The completion of purchasing an item, booking a table, subscribing to the newsletter, and then once you set those up you will see these extra columns of data within analytics. This is not built in for everyone. So the, those goals come from views on, on the link that you would go to to actually book the table? Yeah. Does it just differentiate between people who looked at the book a table page versus they actually booked a table? The way to set the most um, the most correct conversion goal is that you are going to set this to be the page that you get to once you know you've sold it. Okay. Don't like the confirmation. The confirmation. These are all confirmation links. <clears throat> so there's a lot to wrap your head around, but so does that social distinguish between your social media pages and other people's social media? I can distinguish between your Twitter and somebody else's Yelp or something. It should, yes. Um, it all it should be in here as we drill down through the data um, somewhere. If not, then uh, there should be a, a delineation of it in here somewhere. But at a glance, this is saying seven hits from from Twitter, and at a glance here, I'm not seeing the differentiation, but there should be it here somewhere. So there's a lot of information to look at with Google Analytics, definitely, and um, this is a whole class in and of itself, all these different screens. But uh, within each of these screens you might see a, a screen like that. I usually have mine closed, but if you don't see that, there's a little mortar board here. There's a little graduation hat. Because there's a variety of tutorials that it will give you for everything. You can go through Analytics Academy. You can learn all of this stuff in depth, in, in depth with videos and, and tutorials. So what I'm getting at is that we're getting close to the end of the day and there's a lot of information and you might not see too much because you've just set it up. But I want you to explore that, your acquisitions especially, those are your backlinks then you want to think about what you do with those backlinks, the positive ones and the negative ones, because that is a big factor nowadays of, of SEO. 
So we're going to get to just about the end of the day now, but any other general questions? All right, so these handouts that I've given, um, again, I these are variations of, of what we do for real clients, so I do hope you check them out and take them to heart. Um, so that'll be it for the main lecture at this point.